Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Today we have a question from one of our YouTube subscribers. Let's do our analysis and see how we go about solving this one. To send your own questions, please consider subscribing our channel. All right, so here's the analysis. It uh, looks uh, more complicated than it actually is. The end goal of this finding the roots is really be able to factor this polynomial we're given into four chunks, if at all possible. To get this four chunks, here are the steps that we have to go through. Number one, we're going to have to use the PQ theorem. It's a quotient theorem to initially guess one solution. It's a little tedious, but nothing hard. Now, so I took took the p over q and I guessed the x equal to 1 or x equal to minus 1. It happened on the second guess, I guessed one of the roots. Once I have one of the roots, I can use synthetic division, dividing these roots and factor my p over q into one step. That's better than what I started with, where all the factors are not presented itself. But in here, compared to the one I'm given, I have one factor over here. Once you have one factor, rest of them is pretty easy. I continue to factor this one, which I'll show you how. And then the end result is I get this four chunks that in multiplication. Multiplication is very easy for us to find the roots because once I set px equal to zero, each one of the term can be zero, and that gives me the roots x equal to minus 1 for this chunk, x equal to 3, x equal to 2, and x equal to minus 2. Now let's see how we actually go about solving all those steps to get to the now step number 4. All right, so here's the solution. I organized the solution based on analysis. So the first big chunk is what I written over here. The first big chunk of what we're trying to do is get one factor in, get one roots in. Now how you go about finding one roots is this. You use the p over q, that's a theorem that says all the possible solution for this polynomial exists in this combination. All the factor of the last term, which half times 12, it would 6 plus minus 6. And uh, the coefficient for the highest term, which is plus minus half. All the factors between 6 and a half is listed over here. And the division of those combination of all of them, which is a lot. Uh, unfortunately for our case, is where all the four possible solution going to be. So what I did then, I tried, I said, I'm going to just try something easy. Plus minus one could be one of them, and plus minus uh, positive one or minus one could be one of them. I got lucky on the second one that x equal to minus one is a root. How you want to do this is once you have the possible solution is just evaluate it back into there. If you have a p of one equal to zero, then one is a solution. Uh, unfortunately, for our case, it's not equal to zero. Try x equal to minus one back into the px. So that one has to be, happen to be zero, which is great. Once you have a one root that's saying that this polynomial can be rewritten as x minus whatever the root you just found, for us, for us is x equal to minus one. So x minus that root becomes x plus one for us. And then another polynomial of lesser degree. How you go about finding this one is relatively easy. What I here did is choosing to use uh, synthetic division instead of long division. Synthetic division says you list all the coefficients, which is half minus one over here, minus seven and a half, and positive four, and the last one is six. You list them in the descending order and dividing with the roots right over here, which is minus one. And then use the synthetic division. I found the last one, the coefficients that listed here. This last one says the remainder is zero. So basically, in essence, I'm doing a long division over here, but it's shorter form. So dividing the polynomial by x uh, plus 1, the root, I have a lesser polynomial now to deal with. This lesser polynomial, you can read the coefficients off. It's half of x uh, 4 minus 1 degree, which is cube, and then minus 3 over 2x squared minus 2x plus 6. That goes over here. So from the step 1 here, all I did is basically guessing one solution and then use this guess to factor my polynomial into to a lesser degree. Now once I have this lesser degree, I'm going to factor this one, continue factor it based on the analysis I did earlier. All right, now completing the step number one, let's do step number two. I'm going to factor the lesser polynomial further to give us the factored form for the p of x.
All right, the second big step here is I grabbed whatever the lesser polynomial I had from step one and continue to factor it. Uh, the lesser polynomial I have is x cubed with minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12. Notice the com common thing is x squared here, and common thing here is 4. I happen to see that x minus 3 and x minus 3 are common factor over here. If I call x minus 3 equal to m, then the first term becomes x squared times m, and the second term becomes minus 4 times m. m is common. I'm going to pull it out in the front. What I left is x squared minus 4 over here. Since m is equal to x minus 3, let's put it back here. x squared minus 4 can be either easily factored one more time. It's x minus 2, x plus 2. Yay, so all in the end, this lesser polynomial is completely factored into x minus 3, x minus 2, x plus 2. Now let's put everything together. All right, so last step over here. Now, com having completely factored everything, we have from step one, p of x has a factor of x plus one in there. From step two, we have that x minus three, x minus two, x plus two are all factors of p of x. Last step is very easy. Setting px equal to zero, we have the roots for px is uh, four of them, minus one, three, two, and minus two. Well, I hope this helps. Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Please, come and share or like this video. Together we can make math easy again. Have a confident day.